What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode here on the Keep It Hoop YouTube channel. So we usually cover everything in the league, you know, every team. Um, but I'm a Knicks fan um, and the Knicks preseason is over. And it ended last night with a pretty defiant victory over the Cavs. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, one, it's preseason. And two, it's the Cavs without, you know, Drummond and um, Kevin Love playing. I get that. But when you root for a team that doesn't have championship aspirations, you take what you can get. Now, look, I'm confident we'll have a solid season in terms of developing our young guys. I think that, you know, I'm not going into the season thinking we're going to make the playoffs or, you know, anything crazy. But I do like the roster we have for the most part. I think there are guys who could turn out to be solid surprises and be part of the future and obviously we still have you know franchise guys that we have already bought into um when looking back at the preseason as a whole i do actually think it was one of if not the best preseason we've had in a long time and i actually think a lot of knicks fans will agree with that and it's not just because we beat Cleveland by 35, or we didn't beat them by 35, but we were up 35 at one point. I think we had doubled their score. It was like 35-70 at one point. Um, but, you know, we, we've won in preseason before, and, you know, especially around 2012-2013 when the Knicks were actually still making the playoffs, you know, there was more optimism going, or optimism going into the season, right? But, I mean... You know, I, I just wanted to list out some of the reasons, and this will be a shorter video, but some of the reasons why I, I, I am, do really think this was a very successful preseason. One, I wasn't, you know, necessarily going into expecting a whole lot. Um, but yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised, and I felt like I needed to make a video because pleasantly surprised aren't words or isn't a phrase i associate with the knicks very often all right now with that being said there are some negatives dennis smith while his defense has been pretty impressive and he, and he is trying harder on defense still looks a bit lost and inefficient on offense at times um alfred payton as much as i love him deserves to be on a different team and julius Randle, outside of his second to last game where he had 18 points on 7 of 10 shooting has looked a bit out of sorts and out of control Again, as always, right? Um, you know, you can... I'm sure some of you guys, especially Knicks fans, have heard Walt Clyde Frazier and talking about, you know, I think Randall ended up spinning out of control and turning it over. And then Walt Clyde Frazier said, this is why Knicks fans are always annoyed at him. Maybe a little unnecessary, but it's not, you know, he's not lying there. And this is nothing against Julius Randall. I think he's a solid player. Um, I like the guy. Uh, I think... If given a different roster and a different kind of setting, he can be a very impactful, solid player. Like he wasn't on the Pelicans, right? He was on the Pelicans before he came to the Knicks, and he was, you know, a pretty good piece there. Had pretty good numbers, which is why the Knicks signed him. But I do, I mean, I mean, we still have to talk about Obi. Obi is kind of the one big red flag because I think Julius Randle will be fine once the season starts. I'm not going to say he's going to be you know, surprising us with his numbers or play. And I do think that, you know, I mean, he kind of is just going to be what he has been. Uh, but he's only shot about nine times, in the, uh, you know, in the preseason. You know, I think he averaged like 15, 16 last season. So, you know, I think his numbers will be fine. But yeah, I mean, Obi, a little concerning. Um, you know, he's shooting an abysmal 9% from three, 38 from the field. And his defense, as expected, has been pretty bad. But again, I think as the game slows down for him, as he gets more experienced and he gets more minutes and, and is just, you know, more comfortable, I think he'll be fine. I'm not really worried about him. But, you know, let's let's get to the pros. Let's get to why Knicks fans are finally feeling good. Not necessarily, again, about the record or anything, but, you know, just the things we saw. One, RJ Barrett. You know, RJ, you know, obviously we took him really high last year and he was... Look, I get it. Everybody wanted Zion, and he wasn't, you know, there was those, all those crazy rumors about, oh, the Knicks are going to get Zion, Kyrie, and Katie, and that didn't happen. Look, we lived through it. That's over with. RJ may not be what Zion is now, and maybe he never ends up becoming that same kind of, you know, impact player. But I still believe that RJ has the potential to be a franchise player. 
and the best player on a winning team. I really do. Um, he still obviously has holes in his game. He could be a better defender, could be a better shooter, um, and continue to improve as a playmaker. That being said, I do really like what we've seen from him so far. His, you know, field goal percentage is, I think, 50 or 51. He's scoring around 17 points, which is three points higher than he scored last season in the regular season. And he's playing the same amount of minutes. Um, he's seventh in the league during preseason and field goal attempts, so he's being very aggressive. And, you know, again, his playing time, much like everyone else, is going to have to do with defensive effort and, um, you know, not doing anything crazy, right? Because Tips isn't going to really, you know, put up with too much. But you look at his shooting, or at least his field goal attempts, and you see he's at least getting, I think, an even greener light than last year. Um, and look, at this point, we're not going to win very many games. You know, look, let's get the growing pains out. Let Mitch play. Let Kevin Knox play. Let Quickly play. Let RJ play. Like, just let these guys go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I love the fact that he's being aggressive and he's shooting. Um, and that he's shooting a, a, a higher percentage field goal-wise, even with the awful three-point shooting. So, obviously, again, there's still room to be, you know, room for him to grow. But, but you know, I, I, I do like what we've seen so far. We have... Emmanuel Quickly, who we did a video on yesterday, um, go check that out if you haven't seen it. But we talked about how his numbers in the game we broke down, which was the first game against Cleveland, I think he had 9 points and 7 assists. I say we shouldn't expect him to have 7 assists and, you know, his impact, because I did like what I saw from him with the minutes he got, the numbers he would put up and the impact he would have would, would be largely based off of the minutes he got. Well, immediately after that, Tibbs inserted him to the starting lineup, and he had himself 22 points, 5 assists, 5 steals, and look, quickly has been the talk of the town, and even to a degree, the talk of the league. A lot of people are talking about how he was a steal, how, you know, he's, you know, proving some mock drafts and scouts wrong, and look, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt again because it is preseason, it's against the Cavs, we're the Knicks, and bad things happen, right? But... It's a very good sign. I do like what I've seen. It doesn't look like a fluke. He's very comfortable with the ball in his hands, which is, you know, a great sign because that was the one question mark in his game. He came in at the very worst, a shooter and a defender. And the questions were, you know, around his passing and his ability to drive. And he's been able to do that so far, right? Again, I'm not saying it's at an elite level, but he's done a very nice job of playing the pick and roll with Mitchell Robinson multiple alley-oops in the last two games he has a really really nice floater he's under control he keeps his dribble alive he plays you know he's able to snake dribble around screens and keep the defender behind him and put them in jail and then again the, the defense has been there gets a decent amount of steals and the, the shooting has been there so you know he's making a very strong case to be the starting point guard and honestly he's been way more impressive than Obi Toppin um who knows how that dynamic will go moving forward. But it is nice to see, um, you know, someone who wasn't in a lottery pick be one of the more impressive rookies in preseason so far. Kevin Knox is another really, really, um, you know, pleasant surprise for the Knicks and the fans. Um, he looks confident and comfortable out there. And, you know, this was kind of his last chance for him in the Knicks, pretty sure. You know, he's... Um, after being a lottery pick, he just hasn't been what people expected he could be. And now part of that is him. Part of that is the coaching staff for not giving him minutes. Um, after a solid first season, didn't really get a lot of playing time under Fizz last year. Um, but, you know, his defense does look better. He's trying harder. He seems to know where to be a little bit more. Um, and that's big because I, I do think that was one of the big things that kept him from getting playing time. Um and then his shooting, which is supposed to be the thing that he could translate into the NBA right away, finally looks like what we expected it would be. Um, you know, we saw glimpses of it and he had, you know, I mean, his form has always looked good. And, and it seemed like when he had the time and the right situations, he could knock it down. But he's finally, at least in the last two games, and I know, again, I, I do understand <laughs> You know, I might get comments about how it's just preseason it's against Cleveland. I get that. But we're just taking the small sample size and, and, you know, taking the information what we can from it. And maybe it is with a grain of salt, but his shot has looked a lot better. He does look confident. Um, and look, if his defense is better and his shooting is, you know, what we thought it would be, then, you know, 
I'm assuming he's going to get more playing time. And that's all I wanted, really. I wanted Knox to be able to get more playing time so he could, one, develop, and two, so the Knicks and us fans could finally really get to determine if, you know, is Knox someone we want on the team going forward or not? And he, he just hasn't had enough consistent playing time for, I think, anyone to really make that decision to be honest right so really nice to see he has had i think his numbers have also gone up with quickly um playing besides him and i think emmanuel's ability to get into the lane and kick out has really helped him as well um mitchell robinson had finally got to start in the second half of the preseason not really sure why nerlens the was starting but um he's still mitch Mitch Robinson is still Mitch Robinson and not surprised and maybe fans wanted to see more but it is still nice to see um, him finally getting the start. Hopefully that remains a fact going into the season but he was third um, among all players during th- uh, preseason in blocks at three a game and even up to free throw percentage from 57 to 64. Um, but he's been good so far and after invol- being involved in a few trade rumors hopefully we can finally get to see him. Um, you know, be the consistent starter and really take the next step into becoming a, a dominant defensive force. Uh, and perfect transition with that defense. I do like what Tibbs has done. Tibbs has them playing hard and they aren't going to be 100% locked down um, despite guys like Dennis Smith and RJ and Kevin Knox, you know, getting better defensively. And we still have, um, again, Mitchell Robinson, Quickly, who's shown to be a very capable and even above average defender. Neil Keaton is a good defender. Um, they're not going to be 100% locked down, right? Julius Randle has never been a great defender. Um, so, I'm not saying we're going to be the best defense in the league, but he has them playing hard. And they're playing the passing lanes specifically, right? They're playing the passing lanes super aggressively, which I like. We have some young guys and some athletes. I do think that, you know along with some of the wingspan we have that is a really good strategy um i do think that's also a big reason on why we were able to win some of the preseason games if you're able to play the passing lanes force turnovers even if you're not a supremely talented offensive team like the knicks you're able to get out into transition and get easy baskets and that's helped us with you know our overall game and um i get it it's preseason but it, it I think in this case, it's actually even more impressive to see these guys trying so hard during preseason games that don't matter, right? Um, And with Tibbs, he wants to win, but he wants to win the right way and his way. And his way has always been hard-nosed, blue-collar defense. And when you have a young team, setting a culture like this is super important. And when you're under-talented, like the Knicks, unfortunately, will be a lot of nights. When they aren't playing the Cavaliers, they will need that kind of hustle and effort uh, but it's been really good to see. So, uh, you know, I, I do think, I mean, we just named five or six reasons why why I think this was a really good, important preseason for the Knicks. And for the fans, it's been, I think, a, a really good sighting to see. Um, again, grain of salt. There's still a lot of room to, you know, grow. And the season is going to come with his share of ups and downs and, you know, growing pains. And we're going to have games where we're on the side, you know, receiving end of 30 point losses and we're gonna have i'm sure we're gonna see games where you know all of our young guys rj quickly Toppin, knox you know they all have 10 percent shooting nights and eight turnover games and mitchell robson's gonna foul out but the one thing i i really just hope the this coaching staff gets because as much as i love fisdale it didn't really happen with that coaching staff i just want and, and, and I think I'm a little skeptical just because Tibbs is so used to winning. He has a high winning percentage. And he's always had his teams compete at a high level. And this is the most, you know, the least talented team he's ever had to coach. So I hope he remains patient, though. And I want the fans to remain patient. I want the front office to remain patient. Don't try to change anything. Don't go for any home run plays. Just let these guys develop, right? And I get it. We don't have Luka Doncic or Trey Young or the next... And maybe RJ isn't the next face of the franchise. But I do think between RJ, OB, and Mitch... You have three really solid pieces who could be, you know, starters on a championship contending team. And then you have now quickly, who's, you know, quickly elevated himself to be possibly the starting point guard. And you have Kevin Knox playing better. Just let them play. Let them develop. Give them minutes. Let them go through their growing pace because I'd much rather have them go through it now than when we do make a trade or sign a free agent or get the next pick and, you know, whatever. Just let these guys develop. Um, Look, 72 games is going to be still a long season of, you know, again, ups and downs. But I do really like what we've seen so far. And yeah, I, I do really think this was the best preseason we've had in a really long time. Um, 
that's it for today thanks for watching or i guess listening um go watch our other videos if you have a chance um uh, our denny video just surpassed a thousand views so thanks everyone for the support um uh, we have other player breakdowns and college player breakdowns so go give those a watch uh hit the thumbs up subscribe notification button all that comment you know any kind of support is really appreciated we are really trying to double down triple down and uh take this to another you know to the next level and go follow us on facebook instagram and twitter and wordpress you know again we're trying to have more content and uh yeah stay tuned and uh thanks for stopping by thanks see you